In today's tutorial I'm going to be covering a cantilever beam subjected to a point load at one end and we're going to be using three different types of analyses on it. The first one is a modal analysis of the frequency step so as we can view the different mode shapes. The second one then is a modal dynamics analysis to see the effects of applying an impulse to the end of the beam. And the third then is a steady state dynamic analysis to look at the frequency response to a load at the end of the beam. So we're going to start off by creating our part, so double click parts. Uh, we'll make it a 2D plane, planer and a wire. And the approximate size, uh, we'll leave it at 2 meters, okay? Then click on the line tool. The beam that we want to draw will be 1.5 meters long. So we'll just draw a line, middle click to accept it and then use the dimension tool and then call it 1.5 meters long middle click to accept, middle click again and then that's our beam which is represented by a wire so the next thing we're going to do is partition it in half so use the partition tool um, there are four different partition tools, the one I'm going to use is the one where you enter the parameter so if you take the beam as being 100%, we'll click on this. Or, sorry. Okay, and we can see here that we can partition it in half, so 50% of the beam, which will place the partition right here and create the partition. And that's done. Now, the next thing we need to do is to create the material. So, double click materials. We call it aluminium. The density of aluminium be 2711 kilograms per meter cubed. The el elasticity, we're going to put a Young's modulus of 68.94 E9. And then a Poisson's ratio of 0 0.33. Okay. Now we have to create our section. So double click sections. It's a beam section. Stick to the beam type, not the truss. Hit continue. The profile name. We have to create that. It's a box profile. And the width of our model will be 0 0.05 meters. The height will be 0 0.05 again. The thickness is uniform and the thickness will be 0 0.005. So that's five millimeters thick. Okay, we'll accept that. It's defaulted to our default material, which is aluminum. So we will accept that. And now we have to assign the section. So click on this tool here, drag a box over, the entire beam, middle click to accept that and it's gone to our first section and which is made from aluminium so that's okay, accept that. Now we have to apply beam orientations so as the analysis knows which way is up and down basically and which way the beam is orientated. So click on this tool, select the whole beam again, just accept the default here and if I rotate the beam, we can see where the x, y uh, directions are. So we will accept that. And we have to assemble the part. So double click instances, make it an independent part, and click apply. And then cancel to exit that tool. Okay, so that's our generic model setup that we're going to be using for all our analyses. Now, to carry out the first analysis, we have to carry, we have to um, create a step for the modal analysis. So, double click steps, and if we go into linear perturbation and frequency analysis, okay, continue. 
Now, the number of eigenvalues that we're going to request for this is 5, just for the moment for this example. And we'll leave the rest of that, that's okay. If you open up the field output, you can see here the information that it's outputting. So here we have our translations and displacements and rotations. So we'll accept that. Now for the boundary conditions, I just want to fix this end so that it doesn't move in any direction. So it's as if the cantilever beam is fixed into a wall or something at this end. So double click boundary conditions, displacement and rotation, that's okay. Select the end point, middle click, and we're just going to disable displacement in the x direction, the y direction, and rotation around the axis that goes through that. So we'll accept that. Now, for a modal analysis, you don't actually need a load applied, so we don't need to worry about that. So we can go straight onto the meshing module. So we're going to seed the part first. So seed edges, select the whole object, and I'm just going to put in a seed number of 10 here and apply that. And we can see here that because of our partition, it's applied 10 seeds on this half and then another 10 seeds on this half here. That's fine. That's okay. And then just click the mesh tool, middle click to accept that, and it should turn a light blue just to signify that your model has been meshed. Next thing we have to do is create the job just to run the analysis. Um, everything there is fine. And just right click on it here and go to submit. Okay, it says here that the part hasn't been assigned a beam orientation. So somehow I must have missed that earlier. So that was back in the sections. Okay. So click beam analysis, sorry, click on the orientations, beam orientations, select that, middle click, OK to confirm. And that should be done. So go back and try and submit the job again. And this time it works. OK, so for some reason last time, maybe I didn't middle click to accept this enough times. It says here the job has completed, so we right click and go to results. Click on the plot deformed shape and if you click on this button and you can go from frame to frame and it'll show you the different frame the uh, sorry the different shapes associated with the modes for this particular geometry the last mode here is just uh, an extension mode okay and down here as well you can see the, the name of the mode, so that's mode 2, the value of the mode and the frequency associated with that mode shape. Okay, so that's the first analysis carried out. The second one then is the modal dynamics analysis. Okay, so go back into the part then, and we just have to, we can stick with our model, but we just have to create a new step. This step stay in linear perturbation but we're going to go to modal dynamics continue that um, we are going to apply an impulse over 0 0.05 of a second and I want to take 100 data points in that time frame so then the size of each time increment is 0 0.005 okay for the damping, switch on use direct damping data and start mode 1 and mode 2. Even though we previously specified five eigenvalues, this problem only has two degrees of freedom, so we're only going to be looking at mode 1 and 2. Our critical damping fraction will be 0 0.06. Okay. 
and now we have to go into the field output for this and we're going to be changing the output from every 10 increments to every 1 increment so accept that now this time we do have to apply a load so double click on the loads tab and I want to apply an impulse at the end of the beam which is equivalent to one newton second so we're going to stick with concentrated force continue select the end of the beam middle click to accept that and just put in minus one for the CF2 which is which means that there'll be a downwards Y force at the end here for the amplitude we want we want to create the impulse so we have to do that using tabular data go to continue and if you just use this tabular data so at time 0 our amplitude will be 0 at time 0 0.001 our amplitude will be 333 newtons at 0 0.003 our amplitude will still be 333 newtons and at 0 0.004 seconds our amplitude will be zero again and let's say if you were to take that XY data and plot it in Excel the area underneath the curve there would be equal to uh, one newton second so we'll just accept that our amplitude we're going to select the uh, instantaneous or sorry the impulse there that we created accept that and now submit the job again if we go into the monitor we can see here we want it to carry out 100 increments okay so it's gotten there now for step 2 so our job should be completed now okay that's fine now we go into our results and this time if we sorry okay activate the next sorry the uh, the def deformed shape button and we can yeah so if you click back on this button here it'll go back to the beginning so by clicking next frame we can cycle through all the frames here, all the increments, and uh, see what the beam was doing over the 0 0.05 seconds as a response to the impulse that we applied. Okay, so what we're really interested in in this is plotting the displacement in the y direction at the end point. That's what we'd like to do with this. So to do that, we're going to go to Tools, XY data, create XY data, ODB field output. Uh, we're going to use a unique nodal as our position and spatial displacement in the Y direction. That's fine. The active steps for this, we don't want to measure it for the first step, the first analysis that we ran. We just want to do it for the second analysis. So we'll apply that. Okay and in the elements node tab we have to select the end node there and when we hit plot this here shows the displacement of that end node over the 0 0.05 seconds of the analysis so this first dip here is because of the initial impulse the initial downwards impulse on the end and that's the beam deflecting back upwards again okay So we can take this data then, if we go to report, XY data, and if you select XY plot in current viewport, and uh, you can call the file whatever you want, so you could say displacement data, and if you hit apply then, it'll create a plot, sorry, it'll create a file with the XY data for this plot, and then you can import that into Excel and plot it whatever way you want, okay? So now we're moving on to the third analysis, which is a steady-state dynamic analysis. So for this, 
go back into the parse module, add another step this time, okay, and it's still linear perturbation, but this time we're using a steady state dynamics modal analysis. Okay, continue that. For this example, I'm just going to use a lower frequency of zero and an upper frequency of 200. The damping data will be the same as the last time, so we're going to be starting on mode 1, ending at mode 2, and the critical damping fraction will be 0 0.06 again. So we'll accept that. Now we have to create our new load. That's being applied in step 3, which is good. So as we're not mixing up which steps we're applying our loads in, it's a concentrated force at the end of the beam. And we're just going to make it minus 10 newtons. So again, a downwards force. And accept that. And now we submit our job once more. And we'll go into the monitor. So it's completed the first step, it's now on to the second step. It's done the 100 increments of the second step, and now it's going on to the third, and there we can see it's gone up to the, the 200, which was, which was the, the frequency that we specified. Okay. So that's fine, now we go back into our results for this new analysis and again it's very similar to last time we go to tools xy data create odb field output again it's this spatial displacement in the y direction unique nodal elements nodes select the end point again and change our active steps frames and we just want to look at the results from the last analysis, which was step three. Apply that, okay. Plot. And then this shows us our frequency response for the steady state dynamics analysis uh, at the end of the beam. Okay. And uh, for any of these analyses, whether it's the modal dynamics analysis or the steady state dynamics analysis, it could be interesting to move the location of the impulse or the force that's applied from the end of the beam, slowly move it towards the center and beyond that, and then you can compare the displacements of the end of the beam depending on where you have the impulse applied. Okay? And that's the end of the tutorial today. Thanks.